So, are you his mother or his father? <laughs> Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most unforgivable moments in sitcoms. Waited three years for me to get over you, tracked me down, begged me to go out with you again, only so you could dump me three weeks later, again on my birthday! For this list, we'll be looking at the most morally questionable decisions made by our favourite TV characters in situational comedies. Some plot points will be discussed, so consider this your official spoiler alert. Which of these plot points is the hardest to watch unfold? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Schmidt Cheats on Cece – New Girl While their relationship was always a little rocky, fans of New Girl were always rooting for Schmidt to step up for Cece. Oh thank god, coffee. I barely slept last night. Yeah, me too. The two go through a lot throughout the series, but he ruins things in a major way in the third season after they start dating again. Schmidt always had feelings for Cece, yet he continues to secretly date his ex-girlfriend Elizabeth at the same time as her. Jess finds out and rightfully freaks out. You're gonna tell Cece or I will, you... you... Crumbum! Just you crumbum! Yes, you, well said. You are a low life. I, I get it. How could you do this to her? Jess, I am so sorry. We can't imagine why Schmidt would do anything to blow his chances so badly, and it makes it kind of challenging to like him as a character. Things work out for the duo by the end of the series, but that doesn't make this okay. I got lost. And I'm sorry. You're sorry. You didn't want to hurt anybody? That's the best you can do, Schmidt. Number 9. Ted doesn't take no for an answer. How I Met Your Mother You might think that the most morally corrupt character on How I Met Your Mother is Barney Stinson, the ultimate player. She, she said I hooked up with her? What was her name? What'd she look like? She didn't say her name, but she, she had blonde hair, boobs. Kind of trashy. Dead in the eyes with an aura of self-loathing and despair? Yes! That's all of them. He's done countless terrible things to women to trick them into sleeping with him, and shows little to no remorse for most of the series. He even treats them like objects to be sold, and we mean that pretty literally. At one point, I'm pretty sure I sold a woman. I didn't speak the language, but I shook a guy's hand, he gave me the keys to a Mercedes, and I left her there. Those behaviours are hard to beat, but Ted's relentless dating habits are actually more insidious. You sat here in this very booth and you said- I I'm don't care what I said. This is gonna happen. She can't say it's not meant to be. It is meant to be, and you know why? Because I mean it to be. Throughout the show, he frames himself as the nice guy, a victim, and hero. But in reality, his persistence towards the women he's interested in is pretty creepy. No, you have to come down here! <laughs> Why? Why? Because I made it rain! That's what I did today! And that's enough! I I've done my part, now get down here! Number 8. Larry's Kidney Donation Scheming – Curb Your Enthusiasm Oh, Larry David. No other TV character is quite as notorious for his unapologetically bad behaviour. The main arc in Curb's fifth season is dedicated to him doing everything in his power to avoid donating his kidney to his friend Richard Lewis. Well, I don't think you did what I did, but uh, trust me, times 30. Uh, you're not really getting my job. Listen, it does, you're both a match? Yeah. Look, I don't care how you figure it out. You know what? Flip a coin, man. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. What do I care? Since he and Jeff are both matches, they play eeny, meeny, miny, mo to determine who will undergo the surgery. And Larry loses. So you're the loser! No, you're the loser! Tom, Hold on a Tom, Tom, Hold Tom. on a minute. Out goes why, oh, you give the kidney. You give the kidney! No, no, no! You give the kidney! You stupid idiots! You don't even know how to play oh, eeny, meeny, miny, miny, miny. So, he goes to reprehensible lengths to avoid having to go through with the procedure. He even resorts to lies and manipulation in an attempt to get Richard bumped up on the transplant list. That may sound almost noble, but his whole quest is selfish. Listen, what I told you earlier about the kidney? Yeah, yeah. It's not gonna happen. You're shitting me. Why not? Of course, things don't work out as planned. Number 7. Mocking Jerry's Heart Attack – Parks and Recreation No one takes as much heat as Jerry. Or is it Gary? He's always the butt of the joke on Parks and Rec, but in this case, things go a little too far. When Anne and Leslie inadvertently spook him at a Halloween event, Jerry is caught way off guard and has a heart attack. Guys, I... <laughs> Oh god. Oh, I think he might be having a heart attack. What? Are you serious? 
Oh, uh, so much stuff is happening right now. Call 911. But he keeps passing gas in the process, and Tom responds with a barrage of insults. Jerry, get a grip. Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> Ugh. Apology not accepted. Stop <laughs> talking, moron. I wish I could stop smelling. Dude. Seriously, Jerry, did you eat farts for lunch? Okay, so the latter character doesn't realize exactly what's going on at first, but it's pretty clear that Jerry is in distress. Plus, he kind of keeps it going in the hospital afterwards. Would mocking flatulence be funny in another context? Sure, but it's just wrong here. Is there a term for having a heart attack while releasing so much gas? Not really. Gastrointestinal distress is common during a cardiac event. I just want to hear the doctor say that Jerry had a fart attack. Is that too much to ask? Number six, Gina's behavior towards Terry. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. No, Gina, we've been over this. Well, show me. Like, wrap your thick, muscular arms around me and... Why didn't anyone call HR? Gina is a beloved character on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but her crush on Terry crosses some lines. She's constantly making unwanted advances towards him that would be totally inappropriate in any real-life workplace. I'm just a balloon floating in the great blue sky, and I am untethered. And just to clarify, how untethered is Vacation Terry from his wife? Very tethered. All right. Terry has a wife and a family and clearly isn't interested, so Gina should back off. It's odd that she's never really called out about this by the other characters, and that the writers don't tackle how unsettling some of her actions are. And then the big bang! Yes! Now, Amy, back up till you feel the wall. And Terry, ditch the shirt. I'm ready to learn. We know actress Chelsea Peretti is hilarious, but it's hard not to be upset with Gina in this regard. Number five, Michael's betrayal, The Good Place. The Good Place has an amazing season one finale twist that'll have you screaming, holy shirt. Holy mother forking shirt balls. What? Wow. Okay, okay. Throughout the first season, Eleanor believes she's hiding her true identity from Michael, the architect of her heavenly afterlife neighborhood. But once the chaos escalates past the point of no return, she realizes what's really been going on. Michael has been tormenting her and her newfound friends. They're not in the good place at all. This evil reveal is shocking, and Ted Danson's maniacal laugh sells it perfectly. <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe you figured it out. <laughs> oh, God. It's a gigantic and unforgivable betrayal that completely changes everything. Thankfully, Michael does redeem himself by the end of the series, though. I'm a new man. Oh, Eleanor, thank you so much for the advice about shoving my feelings down deep. I feel so much better. It's like I'm surfing on this wave of positivity. Number four, Scott's Tots, The Office. It might be impossible to find a TV character more cringe than Michael Scott. He always manages to make the worst possible decision in any situation, which makes for a great sitcom, but an awful boss. Michael goes way too far when he outs Oscar, and then forces a kiss not long after. Oh. Ah. 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 <laughs> I did it. But by a landslide, Michael's worst moment is his infamous promise to pay for an entire class of students' tuition. And when he can't deliver, he instead gives the room of teenagers laptop batteries. And I have one for each of you. Could you imagine thinking you'll be getting money for college and instead receiving that? All right, this scene is too painful. Make it stop. Who promises that to a bunch of kids and then just doesn't come through like that? What can I do? You could pay for my college. I could give you an extra laptop battery. Not everyone took one. Number three, transphobia, homophobia, and body shaming. Friends. Some series are hard to rewatch years later without noticing major issues, and Friends is definitely one of them. Aren't you a little old to be wearing a dress like that? Don't you have a little too much penis to be wearing a dress like that? <laughs> oh my god. 
co-creator, Marta Kaufman, has recently spoken openly about the show's lack of diversity and problematic treatment of the LGBTQIA community. But that doesn't undo the mistakes. For one, Chandler has a transgender parent who's used solely as a punchline and is consistently misgendered. The series in general does a poor job of representing LGBTQIA people, often poking fun at its gay characters. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm a friend of Monica and Chandler's. I'm Amanda. Oh, I get it. Uh, man, duh. <laughs> To top it all off, flashbacks of Monica in her younger years, played by Courtney Cox in a bodysuit, make it clear that the series is far from body positive. Monica, why don't you finish off these pies? I don't have any more room in the fridge. <laughs> no. No, thank you. Well, Judy, you did it. She's finally full. <laughs> Number two, playing with Celia's toys, Seinfeld. Even though the Seinfeld crew are known for getting into all sorts of uncomfortable situations, sometimes it's hard to be on their side. For example, does George go too far to avoid being caught napping, making people in his office think they're in serious danger with Jerry's help? Bomb threat? Why would I call in a bomb threat? Just call! I think I should have some reason. Shut up! <laughs> We'd say so. However, nothing is quite as bad as Jerry taking advantage of his girlfriend Celia. After their dates, he puts her to sleep to play with her toy collection, with George and Elaine ultimately participating as well. Needless to say, that's a completely reprehensible thing to do. I think it's unconscionable. Hey, last night I found a whole Weeble village right behind the Easy Bake Oven. Easy Bake Oven? <laughs> oh, one's cookie! Oh, me! We're surprised the network even allowed this plotline to stay in the episode. And she doesn't know anything about this. No, not a thing. Well, Jerry, we have a little surprise for you. Come on out, Celia! What kind of sick, twisted creep are you? Oh. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, ruining Rickety Cricket's life. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. The always sunny gang has done some pretty awful stuff. You do realize you're leading me on right now. I'm a priest. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. But if you wanted to grab a drink sometime. You're, you're still doing oh it. Oh my God, I don't In their defense, that's kind of why we love to watch them but at the very top of their long list of unforgivable transgressions has to be what they do to poor Matthew Mara, aka Rickety Cricket. In season two, Dee accidentally manipulates him into leaving life as a priest behind because he wants to finally be with her, but she rejects him. So you don't love me? Oh, Maddie, I think you are a great guy. <sighs> After this moment, his entire life basically falls apart because of the gang. He loses his home, struggles with substance use disorder, and suffers all sorts of horrible injuries. We bet Cricket wishes he had never set foot in Paddy's pub. Unburden yourself and be absolved. Is that a glory hole? Yes, it is, my son. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.